You gotta pick six to eight kids. We'll arrange a trip for them to come to see us in Switzerland. I will see if we could extend the trip to go also and spend one or two days in Paris, and maybe what one or two days in London. How many of you guys would want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> that could have triggered anything out of comfort zone. When we went to lunch and they didn't have cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> the bathrooms? Oh, oh the bath the bathrooms are as big as a Paris hotel room. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they also notice they have like lots of cheese. They really love cheese, like a lot. Indeed. 4% of people in the world that got to see some things that we didn't. Yeah, definitely oh. felt top tier. Yeah, it felt like, <laughs> felt very luxury. So guys, how was it? When I found out that we were going, I didn't believe it at first because I'm not really one to check my emails. Like, <laughs> so once I looked in it and I seen like, this says Europe, like congratulations, something, 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 you're going to Europe. I say Europe, like, huh? <laughs> like this must be a prank or something until we were at the airport really on our way to Europe. <laughs> and it was like, wow, like this is really happening. Yeah, I was just in school. One of my principals comes up and then she's He's like, did you get that email? It says you're going to Europe. I'm like, I did not get that, I don't think. <laughs> but then I looked at my email, came home, I told my mom, hey, mom, I think I'm going to Europe. She said, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so we kept on looking into it. I went to Europe. After like a day of school, and my dad just like calls me downstairs. So I was like, okay, what does he want? And then he says, hey, look at this. And it just reads, congratulations, you've been selected out of like six or five children to be, go to a whole other country. And it just like proved to me that all the effort that I've done, it I didn't know it, but it actually did pay off. When I got that email, right, I was by my friend who was also in the foundation and I was like, yo, did you get this email? She was like, nah. I was really confused because I was gonna go to Europe. But after that, it became reality. When I got that email, I was in my room while everybody else was at work. So I had nobody to celebrate with. I was like, but the funniest part is I was like, I was like in the first paragraph of reading it. My mom called me from work on her lunch break was like, hey, how are you kid? I'm screaming. I'm like, mom, hold on, hold on. Listen, hear me out, just listen. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you. And then I started running around my house. <laughs> I was surprised because of the first time we met Francois and all that, when he first brought it up, I was like, oh, okay, you know, whatever he says, you know, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll wait for that. And then when I got it, I was just like mind blown. Keep I was, your word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how many days were we leaving Akron to go to Europe? Ten, Ten days? Yeah. Yeah. Ten, yeah. Days. Wasn't it like 11 because of it was, the plane yeah, 11 ride? because of the time. Like the, the time yeah. difference into it? Yeah. But the, the being in the air, like, how, did y'all look at the clock when you guys were in the sky? No. It was like three o'clock twice. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, it scared yeah. me, like, so bad. Because, <laughs> like, we were just traveling and kept traveling. And the time was not going anywhere. I will say, I did not check the clock. I was asleep. So after this plane ride, what, what was it like when we first got to Switzerland airports? Was it like another country? Like, I thought it was. It was very different because um, it was quiet. Like when we left from Cleveland, it was very loud in the airport. When we got to Geneva, the airport, it was so quiet. And it was like, it wasn't really much security. I remember when we first got to the line to get checked, it was just a single file line. Nobody was talking. It was like ghost town. Nobody. Yeah, tumbleweed, no yeah. people. <laughs> first of all, like when we first arrived, I noticed like it was immediately different. Like all I saw was just like mountains or like these big like plateaus. Then I saw this beach all out, then I realized, oh, those are like all trees. Like, man, this place is huge. And they're like, obviously noticing like immediately the different culture and standards and just currency and stuff like that. It was just amazing to see. It really just set in that I was actually there. I just remember all like the motorcycles and like bikes yeah. they used. Remember, <laughs> like, you know how when, like, if we left an airport here, we would have seen restaurants going down the street. Immediate. We seen an Audis. <laughs> we seen an Audis in the middle of nowhere then, after we got out like, of the airport. Like right after that Audis, we seen a woman on a bike right <laughs> up. <laughs> Her incline was on ten. And she at like, least looked like eighty. I'm yes. like, at least you still pushing that at eighty. Like, Man, it was, but it was very open. Like the highways felt like more like America, but it was more like you looked around and it was just like 
different. It like, just felt so fresh. The too. air was so pure. Yeah. Like, I, like I really feel like that. The air a, felt crazy. Like there was at least zero pollution ever. Zero. In that. Okay. <laughs> to me, Switzerland just like felt less like. Like, it didn't feel like Ohio at all. It didn't feel like a city or a town. It just felt like all of it was just this giant, like, piece of farmland. It was very unique and just something I was not used to, but welcome to looking at. Yeah, right. Yeah. We've seen a lot of cows. A lot of cows. <laughs> a lot of cows. Lot of animals. I feel like we've only seen, like, two horses. Of, yeah, like, nothing a couple else horses. Uh, remember we seen the sheeps? Oh, sheep. Coming up the street randomly, oh, sheep. Oh, rams. <laughs> like, I think it was, like, yeah, no, because then we started arguing over if it was rams or sheep or something or like that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of the fact that we were in a whole different country and we're American, um, was there a language barrier? Not really, because a lot of people spoke English and, and that was well. crazy. Cause like well. here, I don't think we will be able to just be like that diverse. Like they were very diverse with it. Like they could actually have a whole conversation and understand us. And that's pretty cool. What was our favorite meal? Steak. I feel like sure. we can all agree. Yeah. Steak. We can all agree on the um, Swiss grapes. Swiss yeah, grapes. Yeah. Awesome. Big shout out to them because they deserve it. <laughs> that, that flavor was amazing. All of the flavor was there. Was there anything that like could have triggered anything out of comfort zone? Well, when we went to lunch and they didn't have cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you guys know how we got there. They didn't have cheeseburgers. Like you would think like, okay, on the lunch menu, maybe a sandwich. They had ham, cheese, over an over easy egg. I got that. I remember me and you got that too. I know you looked at a few things a little, I, yeah. I mean like, even if we didn't have cheeseburgers or whatever, like American food, I still tried like a lot of their food, you know? I think the first meal that I had was this raw ham. It was remember? that like patty. It was it was yeah. um, it was, it was some yeah. biscuits know, or whatever. I remember, yeah. I can't yeah. remember what it's called, but I know what you're talking about. But yeah, it looked. <laughs> you, I remember because you said if they have that, why couldn't they cook it into a patty? <laughs> you could have made yeah, it a little medium. Really yeah, I like it. I think the first meal that I ever had. Of course, I don't know the name because I'm just ignorant like that. But uh, just like <laughs> a salad and like bread and like eggs and like. The eggs were cooked in a way that I never had them, like the classic, like with the yolks like upside up. It was like good. I thought at first I thought like, am I gonna really like this? But I ended up liking it more than I expected. And I also noticed they have like a lots of cheese. They really love cheese, like a lot. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Lots of dairy. <laughs> Add on to that, what was it like arriving to Audemars Piguet's headquarters and seeing Francois for the first time since he left Akron? It's crazy when you get to meet somebody like that twice. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I did not expect to ever see him again. <laughs> it's cool to see him the one time. Never thought that was gonna happen again. I would say that he was way more down to earth the second time we met him. Because on the first time he was more just like professional, but the second time he was all jokes, being semi-serious on sometimes. But it was it was just a good time. Like that time we had with him was like it was it was a different him. I feel like it was since he just like was like in Akron, so he wasn't in his original comfort town. zone. It, yeah, right. So yeah. he stepped out of our, his comfort zone just to come meet come y'all. Yeah, yeah, literally. See, come talk to us. You know the experiences we had with Audemars. He he definitely did show us around, and honestly, it's a luxury because there was. Remember, he told us there was like four percent of people in the world that got to see some things that we didn't. Yeah. Definitely awesome. felt top tier. Yeah, felt like, <laughs> felt very luxury. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about it. Like the AP Museum, manufacturing, and showroom. The sure. museum was beautiful. Everything was really beautiful though. Especially, remember when they um, opened the boxes up? Like you just oh, thought they were regular yeah. black yeah. things standing in the middle of nowhere. And oh, then they yeah. opened up and there was just watches. The like watches it was everywhere. really beautiful. What was everybody's favorite part? The show. The show. When you guys put it on. Yeah. Oh my god. The show room, definitely. Yeah, if you didn't have a good time in there, I don't know what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were just gonna sit there and look at the watches he's gonna show him. He's like, all right, go try them on. I'm like, okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, excuse me. <laughs> the whole time, I just felt like I just didn't want to touch anything. I was just like, am I allowed to do this? Like, this feels illegal. <laughs> Was there anything that surprised you about like the work culture and like, cause there's a big difference between like American work culture and like 
um, French culture. Everything they did felt like so meticulous and like actually like handmade and very careful and dedicated to their work. And obviously the products they made, like watches and watchmakers, they didn't use machines. They just used their hands and just so perfectly just put together their products and just with care. Yeah, they were like uh, really passionate about what they're doing, their watchmaking skills. It was really fun. And that one time where we had like the watchmaking class, you know, yeah, we got to see the process and it was kind of like hard, but it was fun. Yeah, it was a very tedious job. <laughs> very <laughs> tedious. I I, uh, I lost about like three bolts during that. We don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Definitely lost three little screws. <laughs> about, just about. It was very frustrating and also a little fun. It was like enjoyable to do at the same time. One thing I thought about was when, um, I think it was one of the Padawans who told us that the only reason why Rolex is more popular is because they put out more because they're machine made, yes. not handmade. Yeah. So to jump off what you said, that is like something that they really take into co like, into like understanding. They really want to make it like feel special because yeah. 24 components, all of that is. All the complications and <laughs> just, everything else just, is just like crazy. Talking about the Padawans, what is a Padawan? Correct me if I'm wrong, but baby Jedi trainees. So <laughs> we know how Francois is about his Star his, Wars. Yeah, okay? his Star Wars. Yes. So um, they are basically like chaperones like to us. So they learn from him and we were learning from them through their eyes. Passing on knowledge, yeah. So to think about the Switzerland and how everything happened. Uh, how was it, like Switzerland, just like Switzerland in general? Hotel room carry in Mecca. Um, yeah. Hotel was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, you walk in there, and you, it's just the nicest thing you've ever seen in your life. You're the black better. detail finish. Yes, dude, it's that was The crazy. bathrooms? Oh, oh, the bathrooms? The bathrooms are as big as a Paris hotel room. I know. <laughs> 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 no, because he speaks so for real. It was so small. Yeah. The Paris bathrooms were unbelievable. But Switzerland was amazing. Switzerland, amazing I feel and like, just yeah. truly beautiful place. Just Indeed. did not expect it. Like, I knew that Switzerland looked great, but I didn't know that it absolutely just passed my expectations when you see it. You know how, you know, we used trains the entire time we were there. As it being the main form of transportation in Europe, how was the experience? as something that's not as popular in you in US. Well, first it was fun when we were all sardined into a train station. <laughs> Definitely sardines. <laughs> we had all our luggage and all, the, and all these people on the train are like, God, these guys are about to get on the train. We're all like, just, Everybody's pushing to get on the train at the same time. Everybody has somewhere to be. Nobody wants to be late. <laughs> like. <laughs> The only train that was good was the Switzerland train. That was okay. Yeah. Because we actually had like chairs and we could just like relax. Oh, we were first class. Yeah, we were first, oh, we were first class. class. Yeah. We were like on the second level. And yeah. Trust me, I still got that. I still got that little piece of paper that verified that I was first class. <laughs> I, I read through it every day like I was there once. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is just too much. You guys remember when uh, it was like, I think it was like maybe midday. If there was no traffic, we got on the uh, train and we were just able to sit down. It was like, <sighs> like <laughs> sigh of relief. Yes. So one thing that really all intrigued us was when we got to see a bakery that was biscuits, chocolate, and ice cream. Yeah. Was there anything that we got to try that anybody really, really liked? I bet there's one the thing. The vanilla. Ever. The vanilla ice <laughs> cream. <laughs> yep, indeed, indeed. That or the bread ice cream had yeah. to be. Now that wasabi ice cream was kind of weird. I don't forget what even the flavor it was. It was not wasabi. What was it? It was like herbal or something. Yeah, it I don't was know. Like, oh, yeah. It's basically like ice cream, but like like herb flavored. It tastes like just spices. Yeah. I don't know if I'd like that or not. <laughs> the biscuits were kind of good too. Those were okay. Yeah. I, I feel like those were like those would have been better if you had like a complimentary to it. Yeah. Yeah. And when I heard biscuits, I thought they were talking like Popeyes biscuits. <laughs> 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 I was gonna get some bread, and then I was like, oh, wow, this ain't no Popeyes. As we continued moving through this trip, what was our favorite moment during the Palace of Versailles? Because that was a big step right there. <laughs> I know that's hard for you to talk about. The Palace of Versailles is okay. A lot of walking, but once we got to ride the bikes through the Palace of Versailles, that was, was that great. the garden? Mm -hmm. It was very fun. 
It was bougie, okay? All the gold everywhere. He didn't need all of it's that. It's not even that. Remember when they told us back in that their time, like mirrors were very expensive, like he just like a mirror, single mirror, just whole mirror room mirrors, and just chandeliers everywhere. Just everywhere. Candles. Yes. Only one person would have like a paycheck a month. Like that pay, that, 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 that paycheck candle month. costed the paycheck. Like it was crazy. <laughs> it <laughs> and there's no crazy. reason why he wrapped a whole chandelier in candles just because like. That. He was, he was very extra, okay? <laughs> he had to show his wealth. Like. Yeah. So as we were in France, uh, of course we got to see the Eiffel Tower from either a distance or up close. How did we feel about that? It was beautiful. Beautiful view. Especially the first night when it was raining and oh, we watched yeah. it start sparkling. That was, uh, also, that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we ran, yeah, we just ran through the rain to get up here. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Dom almost slipped. <laughs> we were coming just after the umbrellas. <laughs> just after the umbrellas. <laughs> like, I swear we went, we went back to the shop. So we took our sweet time walking, grabbed an umbrella, started walking back and y'all just Darting in, darting back. She's gone. And we're just like, oh, we were gonna come with y'all after yeah. that. <laughs> there, there were, we went to a lot of places and we've seen a lot of things, including when we got to go to London. London was a very nice place, just that one and a half days. We didn't do as much. Get get, yeah. Yeah. So, as we know, the triple, the double deckers are very popular in London. How was that, the bus tour? It was amazing. We got a lot done in a little a bit of time. Done, like like we've seen a lot. The Big Ben. Yeah. The, the Big Ben. The Hyde, Hyde, yeah. yeah. Uh, I got amazing the pictures Bridge. of the Big Ben. Yeah. yeah. On the bridge. I remember uh, when we were at uh, Buckingham Palace and we w we all got in that picture and we did the. <laughs> yeah, we'll take. Yeah, we'll take. Yeah. yeah. And then you look over at oh and he's. <laughs> Signature pose right there. What was your guys' favorite moments in general, just through anything? What was your guys' favorite moments? The time when we were at Paris and we were waiting for the Eiffel Tower to start sparkling, but this time we were up close and we had waited oh. for hours, forever. <laughs> and we finally saw it sparkling, it was like an amazing sight, but also like directly, like as soon as it turned on, my phone died. It was not enough battery. <laughs> my phone just, then I had to use uh, Dom's phone to like record this. Okay, I might as well get something from this. And also when we were coming into Switzerland and we were in the car, we were just talking about like the stuff. I didn't want to touch anything in the car. I was like, like what is this? Like, oh, the white, the wet towelette. The wet towelette. The, the, wet moist, towelette. the moist towelette. Bro. The moist towelette. It was like, no. is this like a protein bar or something? Like, yeah. I didn't know what anything was. <laughs> it wasn't, I didn't want to touch anything. I was like, did someone just, like, does this come with the car? Like, for the people? Or? <laughs> it has to be the time when we went on the walk. Remember in Switzerland, where we saw a whole bunch of cows. And that cat really got me tight. Oh, that cat, <laughs> that yeah, cat was. I remember that cat. And that meditation class, it was, it was great. Like we, we all needed that after the flight. And yeah. I have to say my favorite part was when we sat down at um, in London when we were about to leave. When we sat down and told each other uh, how like we felt about each other, um, like that was like a real good like to finish off the trip icebreaker because we didn't know each other from at all. Like literally. I mean we knew each other like kind of just a little bit but not really at all but we got to learn each other a lot throughout the trip so we had a great time together. I know this is like not the greatest moment of all time but the day I got just was getting absolutely hated on at dinner because I was cutting out my pizza. <laughs> All you guys were guys like eating your pizza by the slice and then the two Padawans looked at me and said, you gotta cut that up. <laughs> I swear fork for a solid knife. two hours, they're on his neck. Yes. Like, you gotta use a fork and knife, you gotta hold it this way, and he's holding it like this. And they're like, no, like this. <laughs> and then you look over at me and Dom, and we're picking up the whole pizza, just <laughs> demolishing. <laughs> like, just ooga, ooga, like ooga. taco. <laughs> like, and then they just, they're like, they kept calling him, like him, like you, the kid. So they're like, you know, I gotta teach my kid how to do this. And baby I don't, Cleveland. Baby Cleveland, yeah. baby Cleve. <laughs> <laughs> so as kids from Akron, getting to experience a taste of the world, similar to how LeBron did as a kid, how does it make you feel that we went, went and did this? We were very blessed to have this opportunity. Like this was something that we wouldn't have never thought we would have did in a million lifetimes. Like especially to do it this young is very, I'm very thankful for this experience. You never think you're gonna go that far away. Then you're on an eight hour plane ride. Yeah. <laughs> My back still hurts from sitting all the time, yeah. honestly. Yeah, I'm just grateful for the experience. Um, I'm thankful to LeBron 
Francois, to you guys, and everybody else that was involved with this like, whole trip. And it was the best experience that I had in my life, so. Did any of us leave with any newfound passions or goals in life? To give back. To give back, yeah, definitely. The passion to maybe just like learn more about like different languages and stuff like that. That could be very helpful, more than you could imagine. So yes, like that. Yeah. A big takeaway from this though was um, to learn learning to step out of your comfort zone. Comfort you know, zone, definitely. Like, cause that's very far away from parents and everybody. Like on the seventh day, I was like, all right, I'm kind of ready to go home okay, now, go. but <laughs> I'm having a great time. But like, it's I've been away too long, but. <laughs> Um, being with you guys and Tony and Dom, like it really helped out a lot that we were able to, you know, come together and actually be a family for the 11 days that we were together. <laughs> I feel like the goals, well, this is just one of the goals that I left with is to, like, I want to run life my way. Like, I don't, I don't want to be stuck in this little comfort zone anymore. I want to go out and actually do things. Like, stop, like, holding back on things that I don't want to try. Because even there, I can, like, even just to say that I tried everything they gave me, like, food-wise, anything that they, like, threw on my way, I did. And another thing is to go back with all of you guys one day. Just to, just to be, like, looking back, like, dang, when we were all 16, 17, 18. Yeah. We were out here. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> this definitely was an eye-opener and made me look at life like there is more to life than just Akron and being here, you know? So talking about dreams and futures and all that, what would you tell somebody about chasing their dreams and how do you plan on chasing yours? Be confident in yourself, like see what you can do. Maybe you'll find something that you'll love to do in the like, most unexpected places and you know, just go for it, you know, because there's no formula to these kind of things. And just do what you want to do if that's something that you love to do. Just go for it, like, you know, you may not want to, it may feel like, oh no, like that's a little too uncomfortable, but just go for it. You never know where it'll take you. <laughs> yeah, just go after it. Don't let anybody stop you. Go right in. Don't let fear hold you back. Don't don't let nothing hold you back from what you really want to do. I want to say a big thank you to everybody who contributed to the trip. Um, we had a great time. Um, everything was amazing and um, Definitely thankful that you guys chose us and were able to have us. Knowing the fact that now I have you guys as friends and know that now I got to say I went to Paris, Switzerland, and London all in the same sentence is just, it's like a blessing. I, I don't think I could ever be more thankful for, Swin for Francois and LeBron ever. Like, I, eh, life changed out here, man. Definitely life changing. Hopefully we'll all get to be friends in the future and just hang out all the time. Like like Uncle Dom said. He said yeah. he said we're there's gonna be pictures of us in the house. Of course. <laughs> Definitely. See you on the next adventure, everyone. Cause I know there'll be another. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to more. <laughs> Even if it's just planned by us. <laughs>